What's up my YouTube friends? I've done a few videos on creating animated overlays, but they always require some paid software to pull it off. A lot of you asked how this could be done using free software. So I did the work to figure it out. So today I'm gonna show you how to create an animated overlay for your live stream using nothing but free software. So let's get to it. <laughs> If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. The free software we're gonna use is DaVinci Resolve. It's a really impressive, full-featured editing software that you can use totally free. There is a paid version of DaVinci Resolve, but nothing I show you today will require you to upgrade. It's all free. If you wanna download it and follow along, the links are in the description. I've got a lot to show you, so let's get into it. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to click new project I'm going to name this project we're gonna call it overlay tutorial and then I just click create now I want to make sure my project settings are correct so I'm going to go up here to file and I'm gonna to go to project settings now I need to make sure that my timeline frame rate and my playback frame rate are set to the same as my live stream. I live stream at 30 frames per second, but if you're a gamer or someone else who does 60 frames per second content, then you're gonna wanna set this at 60 frames per second. This should be the exact same frame rate that you stream at. Once you have it set, you can click save. Now we're gonna flip over into the edit tab and I'm gonna right click on the media pool and I'm going to select new fusion composition. I'm going to name this composition and we'll call it overlay tutorial again. Then I'm going to set my duration to 10 seconds. Because this is going to be a looping video, it doesn't need to be much longer than that, but you probably want at least 10 seconds so you can add a lot of variety in there and it's not too short. Then I'm going to adjust the frame rate if necessary and click OK. Now I'm going to drag the fusion clip from the media pool into my timeline. And you can see it creates a little timeline object right there. Now we just need to go into fusion by clicking this icon down here in the bottom so we can start to set up our overlay. Now when you first start using Fusion, you're going to probably be a little confused if you've been using any other editing software. It works on a node system, so just follow along and you'll figure it out. I'm going to go ahead and click here and drag this down. This is a background. When I have it selected, I can change the color of the background. I'm gonna select this light blue color. Now I can just drag and drop it onto one of the view screens up here at the top. And we only need one view screen right now, so I'm gonna just click this button right here and I'm gonna set my view to 25% so we can see a little bit around our box. Now I'm going to go ahead and modify this box by dragging a mask in here. And masks are called rectangles here in DaVinci Resolve. And then I'm going to just connect it using this little dot here to my background. And you can see it puts a little square on our screen. So I'm going to drag the edges of our little rectangle to the location in our main screen that I want it. And that looks about right. Now, over here on the right, it gives us the properties for our rectangle or mask, and we can adjust the corners so they have a little bit of a rounded radius. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and invert our rectangle. Next, I'm going to go ahead and drag another mask in here, and I'm going to connect this rectangle to the other one. And you can see that cuts out the inside of our box. Now I'm going to go into the original rectangle and select Paint Mode Multiply. You can see that rectangle actually disappears. Now I'm going to select the new mask. I'm just gonna drag this out and you can see when it finally comes over those edges, it actually fills it in a little bit. And I can come over here and adjust my corner radius. And now we're gonna have a nice little frame inside our box. So one of these rectangle masks is the inside and one is the outside. And we can select the one we need and just adjust the inside or outside of each of these boxes. So I'm just gonna move this in a little bit like this. And there we go. That's the kind of frame that I'm looking for. Next, I'm gonna drag another background in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that background color to red, and I am going to go ahead and add another rectangle. We're gonna connect this up. And of course, we're not seeing it on the view screen. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and create that second view screen. I'm gonna drag it up onto the second view screen. And I'm gonna give it that fit 25% again. And now I'm just going to adjust this to create another box. And you can see the outline actually ends up on both screens so you can see where this is gonna fall in your main view window. I'm gonna drag it over here to the right 
and I'm gonna adjust the corner radius. You could use something like this to post your chat in. If you wanted to put a chat overlay on your live stream, this is a box that you could use to do that or some kind of video or text or your social media or something like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that second rectangle. We're gonna connect it up. And of course, when I say rectangle, those are actually masks. I'm going to select the first rectangle again. I'm going to go to multiply and I'm gonna invert it and I'm gonna select that second rectangle. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and drag this over and you can see it does create those little edges again. Now I have to just make this the right size, drag the full box over here and I'll expand the size and I just need to round these corners. And now you can see it kind of overlaps our main box. So we're going to want to adjust this, maybe move it around a little bit. And you can do this by selecting each of the rectangles. Just keep in mind, one is the inner boundary and the other is the outer boundary. Now what I need to do is connect these two nodes together so that we can see them both in the same view window. Now I can just drag the merge up here to the right view screen and we see these both combined. Now we're going to add another window. We'll drag it up here to the left window and I'm gonna change the color. Let's change it to a dark blue. And now I'm going to add a mask and basically perform the same process we just did. I'm gonna shape this the way that I want it to fit into our overall overlay. And this is just gonna be another box. You could put social media or something like that in. You could do some sort of donation widget over top of this box. We'll drag it out into its proper location, make sure it has the right shape. And we'll adjust that corner radius again so it matches up with the other objects in our overlay. And now we need another mask, of course, so that we can create that boundary effect. We're going to connect these up and in the first rectangle we're going to change it to invert and we're going to change the print mode to multiply again and we're going to select the second rectangle and we're going to move it down over top of the first one to give us that outline effect and we'll adjust our edges and location and stretch it out so it fits over our box. We're going to round our corner radius on this one again to make it match up and we have to shrink everything down a little bit, move some things around and we'll go down and adjust the location of our other rectangle, the inner boundaries. And there we go. Make sure Merge 1 still has our viewport and we're just going to combine this with Merge 1. And now we're going to drag Merge 2 to our viewport. There we go. Now we have the right view. Sometimes you have to do this. You have to mess around with the nodes. It's not as intuitive as you would think, but it does get more intuitive as you work with it more and more. Now when it's in the full view, I can adjust it again a little bit just to make sure that everything seems to line up and make sense and be centered and all that kind of stuff. And that looks pretty good. Now I wanna add a little bit of a background to this lower circle. So I'm going to drag another background on here and I'm gonna select it and I'm going to choose this grayish color here, I think. And I'm gonna drag this alpha up a little bit. So that makes it semi-transparent. Then I can drag it up into the view window and you can see we can see the checkered squares behind it, which means that it is transparent, but just slightly. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put another mask on here, another rectangle, so to speak. And then I'm gonna size it up so it fits within the, our little blue box here. You just do that by adjusting these edges and moving it around slightly and we'll stretch it out here and we'll move it back into position and then we just need to round our corners and there we go now we have it all fit in all we need to do is add it below our blue background so in order to do this just going to take the blue background and drag it down and now we have another merge and we're going to disconnect that and we're going to connect to this merge up to there and there we go now we have everything displayed properly from merge 2. and i think that's going to be our final overlay so we need to add some animation to this if i drag merge 2 to media out that means our clip is going to be output to edit. So if we go over here into edit, we can see our output clip. That's what our overlay would look like in OBS. So we'll go back into Fusion and we're gonna add some animation. Let's make sure we're seeing Merge 2. I'm gonna right click and go to add tool. And you can see there are all kinds of tools in here. And these are all in the free software. So I'm going to go down to Resolve FX Light and I'm gonna grab Light Rays. And you can see it puts it in our 
node section here. And I'm gonna drag light rays up to the top left. And of course we don't see anything. So what we need to do is we need to add it to one of these other nodes so we can actually see it. So I'm gonna take this yellow and I'm gonna just drag it to this merge. And there we go. Now we see in the light rays one that it's merged and we're getting our effect. We can see what our effect is. And in the right pane, we just have the merge viewpoint. So if we go to media out and then we drag that up to our second pane window, you can see that. For now, we're okay with having the two displays in different windows. It'll allow us to easily see the changes that we're making. So I'm going to select a light rays and we're gonna play around a little here. You can see when I move the X position, it moves this little light dot around the screen and it makes those light rays reflect off of our boxes. We can do it from an angle instead and we can just move the angle around. It gives you a different way to animate this. We're gonna do from a location and we can adjust the source threshold, which adds different kinds of flare to our outline. Down here under appearance, we can select ray drop off and keep shape of source, which makes the shine just a little sharper and a little more dedicated to the way that the shape is. I kind of like that because it keeps it more in line with the shape. You can use all of these adjustments like brightness and everything else to change the way that the light plays in the scene. And all of these can be keyframed to add different aspects to the rotation or whatever you wanna do. You can also adjust the color of the light. So in this case, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow color to my light. We can soften it up, which really kind of makes it lame. And we can change the length of our light ray. And as usual, playing around in these settings, you can get all kinds of cool stuff. And you can add a composite type as well to tell it how to interact with your scene and a global blend which kind of turns it on and off. We're going to actually animate the position of our light ray to make it move around our scene. I'm just gonna dial in my appearance a little bit so it's more like what I'm looking for. And there we go, I think I have everything set. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move our playhead to the very first frame and we're going to select X position and Y position. But first, we're gonna move our light ray to the location where we wanna start our animation. In this case, I'm gonna move it down here to the bottom left. Then I'm going to click on the X and the Y position. And this is the exact location that I want our animation to end. So I'm going to move to the last frame and I'm going to click this little dot here to add another keyframe to the X and Y position. Now I'm going to move it to exactly the center of our composition and I'm going to move the light ray up to the top right hand corner. And this will add a keyframe there, placing that light at the top right hand corner at exactly 150 frames. So if I move this back, you can see that it moves it diagonally across our animation. So it would look like light is sweeping from the bottom left hand corner to the top right hand corner. I'm going to move my playhead to the 75 frame halfway and move it down here to the bottom right hand corner. And that adds a keyframe there. And now you can see that it animates to that corner and then the top right. Now I'm going to move to the 225th frame and I'm going to move my light ray up here to the top left, and that's going to add a keyframe there. And now it's just going to animate all around our box, making those lights dance as it moves around. You can see if I click play, it goes to the 75th frame in the bottom right, and then 150 in the top right, and then 225 in the top left, and then all the way down and starts over again. It's one big loop, moving that light source around our frame basically animating the light and making the frame look more interesting but of course we don't have to stop there we can add even more effects to this if i connect light rays to media out we can go over into our edit and play it right here and see our light moving around as we would see it on our live stream but of course we don't have to just stop there let's go back into fusion and add another effect so i'm going to right click down here in the nodes and I'm gonna go up to add tool. And this time I'm going to add an effect. And I think I'm going to add the rays effect. And here we see rays is added. And we wanna be able to see what rays is going to look like. So I'm gonna drag it up here to the top left. But of course we can't see our boxes. So I'm going to add it to merge two. And it's going to show us on the left what it looks like with rays 
and our light rays. And now we can go up here to the top right and play with what we're gonna get here. Now I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this little blend here. There we go, that kinda has the effect that I'm looking for. When I adjust the decay, now the blend just kinda flares out our little boxes just a little bit. So I'm gonna turn it all the way down and I'm gonna go to frame number one. I'm going to add a keyframe there. And I think I'm gonna do this in quarters. So we're going to go to the 75th frame and I'm gonna move blend all the way up to make these kind of really flare out. And that's good, that adds a keyframe. I'm gonna go to the center of our composition, the 150th frame, turn the blend all the way down. And then I'm going to go to 225 and I'm going to turn the blend up again. And then I'll move my playhead to the end and we'll turn it all the way down again. And this will kind of give a little bit of a pulse to it. Now what I need to do is make sure that that all gets to the output. So I'm going to drag light rays down on top of rays. So we have this merged output and I'm going to drag that over to media out. And now we should have both of our effects merged into our media out. So you can see we get that pulse effect and we get our light ray moving all around our scene. Perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. And you can add as many effects on here as you want. There are just so many different effects in here that you could use. And all you have to do is keyframe them at different times in your overlay. It's really easy. It all works exactly the same as what I showed you here. Now if we go back into edit and we click play, it's going to play all the way through our little timeline animation for our overlay. So the next thing we have to do is export this overlay so we can bring it into OBS. To do that, we're gonna go down here to the bottom right and click Deliver. Now up in the top left, you wanna change your file name. I'm gonna call this Fusion Overlay. Then I'm gonna click Browse and I'm gonna tell DaVinci where I want this file to be saved. Now if I scroll down to go to Format and I'm going to go to QuickTime and then under Codec, I'm gonna select Uncompressed. We have to select Uncompressed so we can export our alpha. The alpha is the background that is transparent and we want this to be transparent. So under Type, we have to select RGB a 8-bit and the A stands for alpha. Now we can go down here and export our alpha. You want to make sure that that is checked as well. And then all we have to do is add it to the render queue and then click start render. And this is going to render out our animation. Once it's finished, you can just save your project in DaVinci and close it down. Now I'm going to use a free application called Stutter Encoder. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out. It does accept donations, but you can actually download Download it for absolutely free if you'd like. And if you like the app, I do suggest that you donate to it. This guy did a lot of work to give us this encoder and it works really well. So once we're here in the encoder, I can click browse to my file location and I just want to select our overlay file. It's Fusion Overlay right here and open it. And there it is listed in the list. I'm going to choose my function. We're going to go down here to Output Codecs and select VP9. This is a WebM codec which works in OBS and it's very small. Now over here on the right, we are going to go down to Advanced Features and we're going to select Enable Alpha Channel and that's so that we get our transparent background. I'm going to go here and change the output destination so it's going to go in to the correct folder and I'm going to select that folder and then I'm just going to go up here to the top right and I'm going to click max quality. This creates a really small file so you don't have to worry too much about it. You can do it in your max render quality. Then I'm going to go down and click start function and this is going to export our alpha overlay so that we can use it in OBS. And once it's finished you can just click out and close shutter encoder. Now let's open up OBS and I'm going to add my camera to my scene so I'm just going to click the plus and I'm going to go to video capture device. I'm going to change my device so it is my cam link and set this all up with the proper resolution and the proper microphone. And now that that's all set up I'm going to go ahead and click the plus again and select media source. I'm going to call this media source overlay and once in here I'm going to select local file. I'm going to go to that Fusion Overlay VP9 and click open. I want this to loop. It's only 10 seconds long and we want it to continuously run. You can see down here that you can adjust the speed so if you'd like it 
to animate slower or faster, you can do that right here. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna click OK. And boom, there's our overlay, all animated up and looking pretty. You can adjust the size of the overlay if you want to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the size of my camera a little bit to put it inside this box. And I could even crop it if I wanted to just hold down the Alt key and drag these little edges. I can do that if I like, but there you go. Now this overlay is big and clunky and it's probably not something you're gonna wanna use, but you can see how easy it is to set up and how much that you can do to configure up something like this. So you can make it look however you want. In this case, it's probably a little too big and you know, it's maybe too chunky and it's not very slick, but this is, like I said, just a simple example of how you can make an animated overlay. I could have made all the edges sharp. I could have made cool lines. I could have added all kinds of different effects. A lot of times you're going to want to take a picture of the background image that you're going to use for your live stream. And then you can fit your overlay in over that. So when you're creating it, you have your background image sitting there, you know what it looks like, and then you can create your overlay around how your live stream usually looks. And this is probably a more effective way to get the kind of look that you like. But all the tools are available in DaVinci Resolve. All you have to do is hop in there and experiment and have some fun. And I sure hope you do. Now this is a super basic layout for an overlay. There's so much more you can do and so many amazing effects that you could use to add animations. The only limit is your imagination. So give it a try. Create the one I made. And then once you get the hang of it, create your own. And if you want to see how to create a stinger transition for your OBS live streams for free in DaVinci Resolve, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber or or live streamer, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.